Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayers for this Saturday the 10th of February. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. I waited patiently upon you, O Lord. You stooped to me and heard my cry. You put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and stand in awe and put their trust in in the Lord. You are the Lord, do not withhold your compassion for me. Let your love and your faithfulness keep me safe for ever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Our opening psalm this evening is Psalm 150. Alleluia. Praise God in the holy temple. Give praise in the firmament of heaven. Praise God who is mighty indeed. Give praise for God's excellent greatness. Praise God with the blast of the ram's horn. Ram's horn. Give praise with lyre and harp. Praise God with timbrel and dance. Give praise with strings and pipes. Praise God with resounding cymbals. Give praise with loud clanging cymbals. 
Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Alleluia. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. And so we move to our readings for this evening. And we begin with our Old Testament reading, which is continuing in the book of Genesis. Genesis 29 verses 1 to 20. Then Jacob went on his journey and came to the land of the people of the east. As he looked, he saw a well in the field and three flocks of sheep lying there beside it. For out of that well the flocks were watered. The stone on the well's mouth was large. And when all the flocks were gathered there, the shepherds would roll the stone from the mouth of the well and water the sheep and put the stone back in its place on the mouth of the well. Jacob said to them, my brothers, where do you come from? They said, we are from Haran. He said to them, do you know Laban, son of Nahor? They said, we do. He said to them, it is well, is it well with him? Yes, they replied. And here is his daughter, Rachel, coming with the sheep. He said, look, it is still broad daylight. It is not time for the animals to gather, be gathered together. Water the sheep and go pasture them. But then he said, we cannot until all the flocks are gathered together and the stone is rolled from the mouth of the well. Then we will water the sheep. While he was still speaking with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she kept them. Now when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of his mother's brother Laban, and the sheep of his mother's brother Laban, Jacob went up and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of his mother's brother Laban. Then Jacob kissed Rachel and wept aloud, and Jacob told Rachel, that he was her father's kinsman and that he was Rebekah's son. And she ran and told her father. When Laban heard the news about his sister's son, Jacob, he ran to meet him. He embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his house. Jacob told Laban all these things and Laban said to him, surely you are my bone and my flesh. And he stayed with him a month. Then Laban said to Jacob, because you are my kingsman, kinsman, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me what you want. Tell me what shall your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were lovely and Rachel was graceful and beautiful. Jacob loved Rachel, so he said, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, it is better that I give her to you than that I should give her to any other man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We move on now to our New Testament reading taken from the Gospel of John, verse 8, chapter 8, verse 47 to 59. Whoever is from God hear the hears the words from God. The reason you do not hear them is that you are not from God. The Jews answered him, Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honour my father and you dishonour me. Yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it and he is the judge. Very truly, I tell you, whoever keeps my word will never see death. The Jews said to him, now we know that you have a demon. 
Abraham died. And so did the prophets, yet you say, whoever keeps my word will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died? The prophets also died. Who do you claim to be? Jesus answered, if I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my father who glorifies me. He of whom you say, he is our God, though you do not know him but I know him. If I would say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him and I keep his word. Your ancestor Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day and he saw it and was glad. Then the Jews said to him, you are not yet 50 years old and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So while we've been looking at this Old Testament reading that we've been following of Abraham and Rebecca and her sons and then Jacob's moving through life and his life with Rachel. Is it they who we glorify? Is it those prophets who the Israelites glorified? Or is it Jesus? For they knew that Jesus was coming. And then of course we reach the New Testament and Jesus is here. Jesus was born and Jesus went out to proclaim his gospel with his followers. For three years he preached. But there were many who didn't believe who he was. There were many who didn't like what he brought. There were many who did. But there were those who didn't like it. Have you ever made one of these? I used to love doing these as a child and we do these at the Ark, especially when we want to do a friendship theme. And so we create a line of children and then we make them into our friends. So we might be one end and then these are all our friends and we are joined together. And we're joined together with a common theme. We care about each other. This is very much like our congregations, our church family. For whilst we may not be related by blood or by marriage, we are related by Jesus. And we are a family of God, holding hands, being together, following him and doing what he asks us to do to proclaim his gospel. Well, in the time of the Israelites, there they were, all standing the right way up, all working together, all thinking that they were right. And then along came Jesus and he was upside down. They thought, what is he doing? What is he teaching us? What is he bringing? We are right and he is absolutely wrong in almost bonkers, the things that he is saying. For we know that we glorify those who we glorify and we glorify God, but Jesus is not the Messiah. Jesus doesn't know God like we do. We are the right way up and Jesus, this guy is upside down. But actually, in reality, Jesus is the right way up. And all those Israelites were 
upside down. They did not really know the truth, but Jesus did know the truth. Jesus does bring us the truth. Jesus is everything that we need to live our lives. Sometimes we may live our lives a little bit topsy-turvy and a little bit upside down, but Jesus is there to be with us and to turn our lives up the right way. So we glorify Jesus. We believe in Jesus and we know that he will turn our lives upside down. Amen. And so what better hymn to have than turning the world upside down? So we, as disciples of Jesus, can spread his word and turn the world upside down. But we are upside down with him and not against him. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for surrounding us as daylight fades with the brightness of the evening light. And we pray that as you enfold us with the radiance of your glory, so you would shine in our hearts with the brightness of your Holy Spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Father of mercy, hear our prayer. You guide your church in the way of truth. Stir up among us the gifts of your grace. Father of mercy, hear our prayer. Holy wisdom fills the whole of creation. By your spirit, renew the face of the earth. Father of mercy, hear our prayer. We are the temples of the spirit. Confirm our lives in the service of the gospel. Father of mercy, hear our prayer. Your anointing restores wholeness to a broken world, giving healing to the sick, freedom to captives and hope to the dying. Father of mercy, hear our prayer. Nothing in all creation can separate us from your love. Receive into your keeping those who have departed this life. Father of mercy, hear our prayer. As we rejoice in the power of the Spirit, may God grant us today the faith of the apostles, the boldness of the prophets and the strength of the martyrs. Father of mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. And now we come to our cycle of prayer for this East Midlands Synod. And we pray tonight, especially for the ministers, elders and members in our churches in Milton Keynes. And now we bring before you, Father God, names of those who have asked for prayer. And we begin with a request from this praying community tonight. And we pray for the wife of the Reverend Michael Pevy, praying for June Pevy, who is in hospital. We pray for Roger Allen and for the Reverend Ruth Allen in her care and concern for him. We pray for the Reverend Patrick Lidget, with Brenda Kenyon for Ron Kenyon, with Celia for her grandson Alfie. For my dad, the Reverend Brian Russell, and my mum, Dorothy. For the Reverend Helen Wakefield Carr. For the Reverend Liz Adams and the Reverend Hamish Temple. For Jean Schenk and for the Reverend Brian Schenk in his care for her. For the Reverend Graham and Vera Maskery. And for Father Andy, Moynier's parish priest. We pray for Barbara Turner in her recovery, for Janet Clarkson as she recovers from her stroke, with Claire Abbey and Spencer for Chris, with Anka Taya for her friend Bea and her friend Madeline. We pray with the Reverend Claire and the Reverend Brian Davison for Susie, their daughter. We pray for Cheryl and for Prince and the family in their ongoing care of her. We pray with Andy for Mike, his dad, and for Liz and Ruth in their ongoing care of him. We pray for John and for Irene as she continues to look after him. And we pray with Jan and our Trinity Church, Lincoln, for Helen. And we pray this night for those who grieve the passing of loved ones. Praying for those who grieve for Jean Davison, especially her son, the Reverend Brian Davison. We pray for those who grieve for Norma Bradshaw, widow of the Reverend Tony Bradshaw, especially the members of her family and our church in Wellingborough. We pray for those who grieve for the Reverend Cecil McCauley, especially for Pat, his wife, and for those who grieve for Don Buxton, especially for the Reverend Maureen Buxton. Father God, we bring all these prayers before you tonight, all these names of people that are known to us now by name as we pray for them night after night. We pray also for your world, for the world that feels like it's upside down at the moment with awful things happening. But we know, Father God, if we stand with you, if we stand the right way with you, 
then we pray that peace will prevail. And Father God, in a world where there is so much anguish, sadness, hurt, conflict, war, famine, hatred, we rejoice in the good things. We rejoice in a Saturday that we have spent, maybe with our families, maybe with our loved ones, maybe not, maybe alone, but we rejoice that we have been blessed with this day. This day that began and this day that is about to end. We thank you, Lord, for each day that we are blessed with. And I ask especially, Lord, for you to be with my granddaughter Jocelyn tomorrow, who will be too, but who is also going to be baptised into your family on her birthday. We pray for a very special day and for hearts to be touched by you. Father God, hear our prayer. Amen. And now let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
the Lord bless us with his grace and fill us with his peace. Amen and good night. <laughs>